Francesco Rizzuto, Dean and Head of the School of Law at Liverpool Hope University. Francesco, welcome to the programme. Look, obviously NATO's happy, but what about the rest of the world? Many people will be thinking, hold on, this is going to promote greater insecurity. You're sending a whole load of weapons all over Europe. Uh, yes. Um, look, in many ways, there's, as your previous speaker was saying, the G the G7 uh, agreement simply formalizes what's already going on. We are G7 countries plus are continuing to help uh, are continuing to help uh, the Ukraine. Um, as to the rest of the world, well, it, it, actually, it, it's uh, it's a good example of uh, the rich West uh, looking after itself. Uh, and forgetting the rest of the world that, that is probably just as, as needy in other ways. So, um, but it, I do think, though, to, to get back to the point about G7, we must remember the G7 is not a military alliance. And we must also remember that the commitments in the G7 communique are, are going to be bilateral uh, negotiations. So, if you like, we, we mustn't forget that. The G7 doesn't go to war. The G7 does not, as a G7, de jure, support, uh, uh, um, if you like, any uh, defence mechanism against Russia. So that, that has to be around. I think the second point that, that should be borne in mind is that, that if Zelensky was looking for a roadmap into NATO, well, actually, the G7 communique establishes the steps and the conditions for eventual membership. So, uh, you know, the two are connected, as they were always going to be. But, but Zelensky now has, or the Ukrainians now have, a roadmap into NATO without a final date, of course, which, which could be in 10, 12, 15 years. And I think many people in the European Union, by the way, will have also learnt that the non-security dimensions of NATO membership and EU membership, which we mustn't forget, uh, are quite important because you don't want to invite into the club states that uh, are all well and good in terms of democracy, rule of law and so on, the day they join, but then three or four years later, uh, dump all of that. Ukraine has a long way to go. On yeah, that, on Francesco, that I think you may have hit the nail on the head there, OK? Because obviously the G7, NATO and the EU are interconnected. Many of them are members of the same organisations. Um, but this issue of uh, Ukraine wanting to become a member of NATO, also expressing a desire to become a member of the EU, do you think those two organizations are compromising on their core principles? There's been a warning from some Scandinavian governments that that is what's happening because we have an issue in Ukraine. And that is shown by the communique from the G7 saying in return for our support from the G7, Ukraine yeah. will strengthen transparency, accountability measures. It will push reforms, including judicial and economic reforms. Ukraine is notoriously a corrupt country, both in politics and in its military. Are the Western alliances of NATO and the EU compromising? I don't think they're compromising. They're basically setting a condition. The, quest, the real question is, who decides when those conditions are met and for how long those conditions have to be complied with? Uh, that, that's the crucial question. This is my point about, well, you know, today we're going to join, tomorrow we change. I think many, not just in Scandinavia, by the way, Many members of the EU have learnt their lessons with the last Eastern enlargement and the challenges we're having now on some of the conditions that, that Ukraine has to meet in countries like Poland, in countries like Hungary, in countries like uh, uh, Slovakia, not to mention Slovenia. So uh, there's a certain... Way. I don't think there's any compromise, but quite clearly uh, the NATO and the EU has had to give Zelensky something to go back home with. Um, so it's important to view it in, in those terms. I, I don't think the EU is basically, you know, rolling over and allowing Zelensky to do and say what he likes. Incidentally, I don't know whether you picked up on this uh, earlier on, the British Defence Secretary uh, 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 said that uh, Zelensky mustn't regard us uh, as uh, an Amazon. In other words, 
you simply ask, tell us what you want and we'll give it to you. So things are not quite as, as uh, how can I put it, quite as uh, in favour of Ukraine simply dictating the terms of whatever. Um, so I, I'm not so sure about compromises. Uh, I am sure, though, that, that um, many in the EU uh, are pretty clear that Ukraine will have to demonstrate over a sustained period of time that it complies with, if you like, the extra security dimension, uh, which you know we've we've undertaken to to uh, uh, give in any event and have been given since the beginning of the war. So there's no change there, really. Francesco, until the next time, appreciate it and take care. Thank you so much.